Hello, I'm Jake's editor, and I'm here again with Chris from Cinema Savvy. And this time we actually worked out our interests. Chris, why don't you say something about yourself? Well, I mean, you've got your interest. See, I was going to do like this whole Empress Palpatine style swivel chair thing, but um, I'm on a leash right now, so. Like just, just imagine like it was a, a grand entrance, like Palpatine, like it, yeah. I'm Chris yeah. from Cinema Savvy. But, um, yeah, there you go, there you go. Add your own theme mm -hmm. music, folks. Yeah, I don't, I don't got a fancy. Actually, no, I do. I have, um, I have Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi. Somewhere where I can't find it. So, um, imagine I have that too. In this. Well, now this motherfucker dual wielding and like. Uh, you you mean this uh, this lightsaber, right? I do I do mean that one, but yeah, I got you... like I got like a piece of plastic shit on the end of it. This is a piece of plastic shit. No, I mean the blade. I know, but this was three D printed, so it's a piece of plastic shit. Okay, wait a minute, isn't that? Hang on, let me let me check that again. Okay, no, that is okay. I thought that was Obi Wan's end for a second. Like the end looks no, more no, like no. Obi Wan's. No. We're here reviewing a fan edit, by the way. This is this is just a distraction. Let's just let's just get rid of this. <laughs> and then a million voices cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced by Ryan Johnson and his crummy directing. The man's a provisionary. He's he's something. He's many things, but um, I, I think we'll probably get demonetized if I say those things on the channel right now. What do you mean, we white man? <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. So we're viewing the Phantom Edit. It's the we are. It, yeah. It uh, created by Mike J Nichols. That's how you pronounce it. It took some googling. Uh, how did you think it was pronounced? I'm I, I'm let's you know. Nichols. Nichols, like it might. I might have put more emphasis on the O. I learned it a while ago. It just took some googling. Okay. But I mean, this is kind of a big deal. I mean, like the Phantom Edit, especially like I mean, we're fan editors. We edit shit. Like the Phantom Edit is arguably like the most historically important Star Wars fan edit since, well, the special editions, right? <laughs> yeah, this was. Uh, he, I think he did. He say that in this commentary, or the does he say it in the next that you haven't seen? Does he? Um, he may say it in the next because I mean this audio commentary was recorded right around the time of like 2000 I'm guessing because he makes mention that Memento's just come out by Christopher Nolan um, you know he mentions that he doesn't know whether the um, the necklace that Anakin makes Padme is going to come up in the next film so I mean this is going way 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 back it is really uh, interesting to hear someone actually talk yeah. about Attack of the Clones as though it has not come out yet yeah so I'm guessing this came out around about like 2000, 2001 kind of time. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it came out it in 2000. It it was first made on VHS, which is why it's uh, episode 1.2, the Phantom Edit, mm -hmm. because 1.1 was on VHS, mm -hmm. implying that version 1.0 is the Phantom Menace. Yeah, at least that's uh, what I took from it. And I guess what we should say as well is that. Um, I mean, you tasked me with watching both the actual cut of the movie and also the audio commentary. Unfortunately, because I'm so shit, I didn't have time enough to watch both of them. So I just watched the audio commentary. But actually, I think that was probably, as you said, the better option. Um, it, it goes way in depth into his thought process. And you really get a sense that he understands these characters and what he was trying to achieve with his edit. So you heard it here first, people. Chris's shit level is so. <laughs> oh, it's pristine. It's the best. It's the best. Yes. Um, but um, as it's, always, um, we're going to be um, ranking these in the usual four categories that we do. Originality, invisibility, complexity, necessity, and the movie itself. Um, but I think we're going to kick off today with just sort of our general thoughts on the edit and everything. Yeah, this, this, is, this is one that I think we should get some opinions in. Let's get some feelings. How do you feel? How do I feel? Uh, cold, sir. Um, that's a line by... Jake Lloyd, I believe, in the movie. I don't know. Um, so, Phantom Menace, of course, is a movie that needs no introduction. Um, See, I actually, you, we can. <laughs> I've, um, I, I thought I have seen this edit before, but it turns out I didn't. I watched the Phantom edit version, I guess, where there are a number of edits that have that name. They'd resubtitled the Nemoidians. 
and uh, like they made like a completely jarbled alien language for them because they That's didn't the like the original anti cheese edit, I believe. That, yeah, I think I watched that one and I got that mistaken for the Phantom edit. So I hadn't seen this edit before. So this was completely new to me, um, which is insane when I think about it, considering it's kind of like a big deal. <laughs> but um Phantom Menace, like it was the first Star Wars film I ever watched. It's difficult to rank this. Like, am I ranking this in terms of its um editing proficiency or am I reviewing this in terms of a movie of itself? I guess throughout If this only review... we had five categories to right. help you break that up. I know. So if we're talking about general thoughts, is this my my general thoughts on Phantom Menace still? Because that will con you know, that will contribute still. Because Although it was the first Star Wars movie I ever watched, like I agree with, there are countless videos out there, hour-long videos analyzing these movies. I still Star have a lot Wars, of trouble. The Phantom Menace was the most disappointing thing since my son. There you go, and that again, like there's a lot of things surrounding Phantom Menace that is probably like the best video analysis essay on the internet. Um, I wouldn't I don't know. Say and it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's cutting to me, by the way, in um, the stream. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's not cutting to me whilst I'm doing this. If it's cutting to you, then we're Hang good. On, let me... But um, if it's just been at me, no, yeah, it's cutting to you. Oh, okay, okay, we're good, we're good. This um maintains the facade that's going on right now. Um, where was I? I'm rambling on this fucking thing. But um, essentially, what I'm saying is that I have all the problems that I have with Phantom Menace. To me, Phantom Menace is a movie that is fundamentally flawed from the ground up. Like, I don't believe there is a way to make the Phantom Menace, in Menace into a compelling, entertaining, fun-to-watch movie. It still has all the same dreariness, the meandering plot point. The only good thing about this is that it's a lot shorter. It's like one hour fifty, I think it clocks in around that kind of time. But what I do appreciate about this edit is that, yes, he's removed a lot of the cartooniness. However, some scenes feel very quick and move almost at a breakneck pace, which I know is what he was trying to do. But it feels like you get segments of scenes and it speeds through very, very quickly. So the pacing might be thrown off that way, even if he is removing like slapstick and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but what I, I appreciated about it is, um, and going back to the commentary, you really get an insight into this guy and his thought process behind every edit that he makes and the reasoning behind it. And when you do get that aspect to it and you do hear his commentary on it, you can absolutely see why he's doing what he's doing and you can go like, okay, no, I, I can appreciate why he's doing that, why he's done that. But in terms of the movie itself, nah, like it's still mm. as boring as all hell. Yeah, I know what you, I, I, one thing uh, is that's very, that's true about this edit that's very different from uh, most edits you'll see today. Uh, he barely diverges from the story he in the in the center of this plot it is still the phantom menace um you know even like even to the fact that he his crawl has absolutely nothing to do with the plot because he's changing the plot in no way shape or form well yeah no the overall plot he's not changing no, it's exactly the same he even makes a point about jar jar as well that most cuts try to eliminate him as much as possible whereas mm -hmm. like jar jar is very much still in this edit he's just uh, diminished the effects of jar jar i guess mm -hmm. is the best term to use for it that terms he used for it he used one term and it was jar jar antics yeah yeah repeatedly and th there are still quite a lot in this edit that I thought he could actually do away with entirely. Um, oh, yeah. The scene where he gets his mouth caught in the um, the beam of the pod <gasps> racer, that, like that's still there. Like he doesn't carry it on and like have him get his hand stuck in the pod race or anything like that. But like that surely could have been removed. It could have been. But this is the thing. Like it's just. You can remove all these bits, but it's just fundamentally at its core, Phantom Menace feels like a pointless movie in the saga. Like you well, could you could start Attack of the Clones right where it is, and with exceptions to stuff like Anakin's mother, you know, and, and things like that, then you can pretty much just go straight into that movie. Well, but that's um, my, that's sort of my thoughts on Phantom Menace as a whole, but that still does have some carryover with me when I watch this, but I can still appreciate this as being a well edited fan of it which it is which i guess mm -hmm. could take us onto the categories or unless you want to give your initial well, opinions on it too i just wanted to add before we get into this uh based off of everything you just said about how phantom menace is unsalvageable i gotta know have you seen my edit of phantom menace 
Like I, I'm sure there are your cut, like everyone's cut, like they do a damn good job with like the material they have, but I just think it's a fundamentally flawed movie. I don't think for me personally, like, yes, there are some good scenes in it. Yes. There is some exceptional music in there from John Williams among the best ever. I mean, Jewel of the Fates, come on, like yeah. some of the best music in the star Wars saga. Um, but it's just, it's fundamentally flawed from the writing, the characters, the lack of focus. It feels, uh -huh. it feels like George Lucas just threw himself into it, not knowing where it was going to be. He didn't have a plan. He didn't have this trilogy. He may have had like the rough character arc. Like I want Anakin to become bad guy. And he might have had that as the bare bones plot line. But in terms of everything, I think he probably had some kind of plan when he got to like two and three, because there's definitely a, a stronger connection between two and three there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Well, um, what was it? I was going to say something about uh, keep talking. I totally had something. Um, but I mean, Fuck. yeah, like, as I say, I do have that nostalgia with Phantom Menace. It was the first Star Wars movie I ever watched when I was six years old. So a part of me will always love it, but you know, with the overlong action sequences, like the underwater sequence, the pod race sequence, the lightsaber fight is the best bit of the movie, but it's broken up with a lot of stuff in between. That's just terrible. Um, this fan edit at least does seek to eliminate most of those things and keep the, the story <laughs> the as boring and laborious as it is. He tries to keep that story moving in some way. Um, uh, yeah, I, um, I have no idea what I was going to say before, but I'll just point that, like, you know, I, I'll say, like, one thing a lot of edits, there aren't, uh, even he, in uh, Attack of the Phantom, I think is the this, this, uh, 2.1, uh, in this, he very much sticks to his story, and that's sticks to the story of the original, which isn't even something he does in Attack of the Clones, which, oh, fuck, I remember what I was going to say. I've been saying this for years. Uh, I've always considered uh, the Phantom Menace to be. I probably should have finished that other thought first. It doesn't matter. Uh, I've always, about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember what it was. Phantom Menace is, uh, in my opinion, a very well executed bad idea. And to contrast it, uh, Revenge of the Sith is a very, very poorly executed good idea um i can see that i mean there are a lot of questionable ideas in phantom menace um you know everyone knows jar jar that seems like easy pickings to say that but um there's a lot of other things in there perhaps but i will say from a visual standpoint phantom menace is the best looking of the prequels um like everyone, everyone talks about yeah i mean everyone talks about the sets with the t yes yeah uh, we heard what you said i think maybe someone totally misconstrued that in a different way um but yeah like you get to attack of the clones and you you visually compare that with it even like people say like the original trilogy you compare it with phantom menace it's night and day like if they'd have maintained the same level of balance between cgi As and there is a should. lot of, there is a lot of cgi in in phantom menace of course there is i mean watto the, the cityscapes the gungans everything but because you have those, like when you get to the palace and stuff like that, when you get to scenes like that, it just looks more real. It's it's the best looking of the prequels, and I'll stand by that till the end. But um, as you like, Fat Return of the Jedi, um, sorry, Revenge of the Sith is the best of the prequels in terms of its story. And in fact, like a lot of fan edits that you see now combine one to three in one single entity, one single movie, to the point where they'll just like have a cold open with the Jewel of the Fates. Like they'll just completely skip over everything else from the Phantom Menace which shows how relevant it is really in, in terms mm. of the saga. I mean, yeah, with the no exception change. of like a name drop of Qui-Gon, Metachlorians, um, Do you need and what else? Like, and, and his mom for like Attack of the Clones. That's it. That's literally all that's set up in episode one. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's set up in Attack of the Clones with the um, I don't sleep well anymore line and because of your mother. Yeah, you know, so again, you could argue, like, again, Qui-Gon, like, you can't really... I mean, he says your old master Qui-Gon, but it comes with this big reveal, but which might seem a little pointless, I guess. But, um, yeah, I mean, everything else is right there in, in the dialogue. I think you the know, reveal is only pointless is if throughout your entire edit you've been periodically re revealing Qui-Gon talking to Obi-Wan. Yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> Um, so should we get to the criteria now for, um, yes, I've got that open right here. Uh, originality, 
pretty self-explanatory, wouldn't you say? Um, yeah, it's it's how original is the edit. Like, um, are there any it, other ones to it? Uh, we need to bring more than anything historical context in terms of this edit. I think in that, yeah, are there many more like it now. Yes, many. But when this first came out, no, this was like a first. And even in the audio commentary, he talks about that the reach that this edit had, which he wouldn't even dream of. He talked about. I mean, I think he's using exactly the same ed editing software that I still use now, Final Cut Pro, <laughs> he mentions that. Um, Premiere! And it, yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong, like, this fan editor, like, I forgot his name, like... Mike, get, the edit doctor. Yeah, that's it, the edit doctor. Um, he's doing stuff that I, I still can't do, like, the whole... Um, he talks about going into the audio files and stripping out the dialogue. I've always said that that's one thing that I'd love to be able to do. I just don't know how to do it. He had access to the, the audio sure, file sure. like that. Um, so, I mean, even though it was still bare bones stuff and like now we've got Adobe and we've got After Effects and we've got all these things that are like <laughs> mind blowing at this time, like the nineties into like the early two thousands, like this stuff wasn't, this was still very much in its infancy of like home video editing software. Like people were still using fucking Movie Maker at this point. This was first made on a VHS. Yeah, and that says it all. So originality. I'm giving it ten out of ten because not only did this start a whole bunch of Star Wars fan edits and inspire people to do that, um, but just fan edits in general. I think this is kind of what most of the fan editing sites built their site upon was like the the reach that one guy re-editing a movie i don't even know if fan edits were a thing before this point i'm assuming they were but um certainly with the technology that was available to him during this time i think he's definitely one of the if you're going to do like a mount rushmore of fan editors he's like definitely got to be like one of the main heads on there yeah he it, well let's who would it be i'm just thinking star wars editors because that's like the main one that gets edited a lot mm-hmm because there's a lot to work with. You'd have um, Star Wars revisited on there, probably. Yeah, you'd have eighty one Harmy. Oh, you'd have, yeah, Harmy. I was just gonna say, uh, Edit Doctor, and there's got to be there are four heads on Rushmore, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, Topher me. Grace. <laughs> yeah, yes, Topher Grace. That's much less. I really want to see that Mount Rushmore now. Topher Grace is <laughs> I listen. I have Photoshop. Yeah, like get on it. <laughs> Actually, no. All right, you, you I, continue I'll the review. Uh, no, no, you just continue the re review. Okay, okay. This. shit. Right, invisibility. Um, no, um, no, I, I'm on original. Right. Well, wait. Yeah. Do you have more to say? Uh, no, I'm just. I, I gave. I give it ten out of ten. Like in in context now, is it original? In terms of everything that's followed it, probably not. But in terms of it was probably the first one made. Well, it was the first one made, really, arguably, that we know of. Well, um, yeah. And the track it built up, it's got to be 10 out of 10, right? Yeah, I, I agree. Definitely gets 10 just because it is the first unauthorized re-edit of The Phantom Menace to receive major publicity and acclaim. It was, you know, it was the first fan edit to receive major publicity and acclaim, um, except maybe the Star Wars Special Editions, which I almost gave it a nine because in Attack of the Phantom, he says that, you know, what he's done isn't that different to the Special Editions. But no, um, in the end, I think it's it's getting it's getting a solid 10. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that brings us on to invisibility. Which, um, how evident are the edits themselves? Is it really jumpy? Is it really scattered? Does it flow smoothly um, like a, a regular movie should? Mm -hmm. Um, now, again, I kind of have a problem with this because I watch the audio commentary, so, I mean, that's on me, that's my bad, I can't pick up on all of the different audio tweaks here and there and smoothing things out and continuation of music because I've tried editing the Star Wars films myself without, like, the level of knowledge and know-how that this guy had or many other fan editors have, and I found when I was chopping the movie with the music intact... John Williams' score pretty much flows throughout, and it has, you know, sequencing and beats, and it rises and falls um, to the point where, you know, it's it's next to impossible to get that music smooth. So I can't vouch for the music. What I can vouch for is what I saw was the, um, the visuals themselves. And in terms of the visuals for me, um, it, it flowed pretty well. I do think that some scenes did move at a very breakneck pace, but that's because he's removing a lot of the slapstick, and the slapstick takes up a lot of the percentage of the scenes in Star Wars The Phantom <laughs> Menace. Um, 
but one thing I did like, he talked about the audio, um, the visual wipes, sorry, the dissolves, the fades and everything like that, which I know you hate. I love them. They're part of Star Wars to me. As I don't as hate them. I just don't think they should be in the anthologies. Right. Okay. But um, he talked about when you put a, I, I mean, I didn't even know this. I've been editing for like eight or nine years and I didn't know this where he says when you put a transition in the frame rate changes or something. So he had to like back it so, off and he had to make it a concurrent frame rate with the movie he was working so that it looked seamless this is actually going to be kind of different for you so um yeah so he was so video on like television in the united states is at 30 frames per second uh and film will always be has always been 24 mm -hmm. uh and that's because uh it since it was at 24 frames per second they were sending the frames via electrical signals or some that um and since america was at 60 hertz they decided to do 30 30 frames per second and just send one every hertz mm -hmm. every other hertz uh in the uk it, you you guys were 50 hertz so that's why the uk gets 25 frames per second oh, okay just a little little fun fact about people mickey mousing a job and screwing everybody over in the future that's See, I, know, I, I knew there was a difference. I didn't know the reasoning behind it. So that's that's taught me something there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like so when he goes into that level of detail, what he did and like the music and everything like that, as I said, I can't vouch for the audio. So I'm probably going to have to fall to you for that one. Um, I so know the audio my, pretty well. my, my score might be a little disingenuous, I guess, because I haven't really seen the entire package. But um, I mean, it seems the fact that he well. brings attention to it, though, I think helps. Yeah. He did mention that some cuts aren't as smooth as others, so I do appreciate an editor that can go, you know what, this doesn't look as clean as it probably could or is doable. Mm -hmm. um, he mentioned a scene as well. I don't know if this comes into context of more so the movie or um, invisibility, but he talks about Jar Jar. He tried to digitally remove him in the background of one scene where he's juggling things mm -hmm. in one junk shop, and he doesn't, so there isn't really much of a continuity there. Um, he almost... He, uh, what was the reason... he? Explained that even though he had it, he had the shot done, but um, what was it? He couldn't get rid of Jar Jar's audio. Yeah, but um, I actually think it would be very, very easy to get rid of his audio. Like, maybe not all of it, but, like, there's a line where Qui-Gon walks and he says, we're leaving, Jar Jar, yeah. and then you hear a crash after that. Just resubstitute. It's a quiet scene. There's no music in it. Just resubstitute that audio with something completely... But you know, as, as he explained, you know, he can't get Liam Neeson on the phone you know, to get to record some dialogue. He, he doesn't need to. What my, my point is, is that you might hear like a little bit of shuffling in the background. But after he says the line, we're leaving Jar Jar, the crash and the comedy sound effect follows after he's already finished his line. Mm -hmm. So you can keep that line in. But yeah, just, or do some kind of um, noise removal um as best as you can like and get it as close as you can and then just get some background audio mm -hmm. um I, I think that was kind of a lame excuse because i think i think it would have been doable to remove stuff like that but i'm gonna give um i'm gonna give invisibility an eight um i can't give a full well-rounded thing in terms of the audio but the visuals maybe it's my knowledge of the original movie so i can automatically tell what was cut mm -hmm. but i do think some scenes were abbreviated very very shortly um yeah, I'm going to give it an 8, which I still think is very high, but um, I can't vouch for the entire thing in terms of the audio. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're going to be a little... Hang on, uh, let me just... i got to remember to put yours in whenever he's 8. So, uh, i got to disagree with you a little little bit. Uh, I kind of like the kind of sped up pace a little bit. I believe I think it uh, helps this movie flow a little better. You know, it's not, it doesn't feel as bogged down. It's not as, it's, you know, it, it used to just be so dense. I mean, every frame had so much going on in it. But, uh. Oh, shut your fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Mike, he knew what he was doing. You know, using all, mm -hmm. using the alternate audio tracks from the uh, surround sound. He managed to hide all, most of his major edits. No, all of his major edits, I'd say. And um, there's really one edit in the film I can't help but notice, and that's something anybody can't help but notice. That's the crawl. Yeah. Which is, you know, an actual point. address to the audience. It's saying, here's why this was made. It's, it's, and do you even count that? 
see what i usually i get well it's part of the movie i guess like his movie so you kind of have to so you can't watch this as like an introduction to star wars without already knowing it's an edit what i would usually do and what i'll probably do for my own fan edits is that i will have like a text screen at the beginning before the film begins like have a text screen come up just explaining it like the people that have worked on it with me or mm. something like that what the intention of this is and then just go into the main movie so you do That's get that message but it's not idea. it's not actually part of the the tangible movie huh that's i'm stealing i might steal that <laughs> I mean, I've seen that on a bunch of like fan edits that I've watched recently. But, um... Oh, so you so you stole that? Yeah, I mean, you're saying we're all you thieves, dirty, though, right? dirty thief, you <laughs> burglar, you damn dirty ape. Oh wait, that's a different movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is Carrie, by the way. This I, I brought it here because it's named for Carrie Fisher. The, the, was there a moment where Carrie Fisher ever wielded a broadsword? No, but I got this as a gift from my cousin, and I was like, it doesn't have a name. And so I'm like, well, they say the best swords have names. Are they dragon heads or wolf heads? I can't tell. I think they're wolves. Yeah, they're wolves. Okay, well... This is the maker's mark, right? You're a there that you wisdom. can't see. <laughs> Lots of people name their swords. Lots of cunts. <laughs> Can we just take a second to appreciate that cunt is the best swear? Um, it is. It's it's one that still carries like a lot of charge with it, though. Like, like a, a chill runs up people's spines when they say it in the UK. It's like, oh, you went there, you said that. Like, I, fuck is the most like acceptable one that people tend to use mostly. But you see, I I find the opposite. Where in my neck of the woods, it's it's a little bit uh, more versatile. It can carry that weight, but then it's at the same time can be used more casually. Like, if we're gonna, like, bring, like, age ratings into it, like, fuck was, like, your hard R, and then, like, cunt was, like, your NC-17, you were like, oh, shit, like, you just, I don't know, it was, like, it was this hard-cutting word with, like, the plosive C and, like, the T, and they're like, oh, it cut deep, man, it cuts deep. Man, this this fan edit review took a weird turn. We've gone on so many fucking tangents right now. Let's it's cool, man. Back, though, uh, so what are you giving it for invisibility? Uh, I so because just because the crawl is like the only thing I can't not judge, uh, it gets a nine point five. Okay, that's fair. And complexity. Now complexity is not actually that complex to explain. It's pretty self-explanatory. You know how different is the edit compared to the uh, source material? You know how much time and effort went into it. Um, and it's meant to simply trim fat, usually, you mm. know, slack in this category. So I, with this one, the purpose of the edit was uh, just to make a stronger version of the Phantom Menace. You know, I said earlier, it really sticks to the uh, to the story of the Phantom Menace, which it, it, you know he doesn't even do for Phantom uh, Fat, uh, Attack of the Clones. I, I, I can only think of one edit that does that with Attack of the Clones. It's not even out yet. It's um, if anybody here has heard of Cat's Prime Cuts, sh there's um, someone in the UK doing an edit of uh, Attack of the Clones that actually keeps the Forbidden Love Story, which I think is hmm. interesting. Yeah, I mean that's like some of the worst parts of Attack of the Clones. So that would be we're gonna see the fireplace scene, and if apparently you're gonna it's gonna be in. good. If you're going to keep that in, is there any point, unless they're revoicing it and everything like that with some great impersonators and some like great re that new lip sync and stuff like that, is there any point in even re editing Attack of the Clones if you're going to keep all that stuff in? But we'll just see, have to see how it goes. I, you know, I'll, um, you and I will, will do a thing when it's, we'll out. probably do a thing. Yeah. We'll, we'll watch Cat's Prime Cut. We'll watch. Or Ivan Ortega's edit, and we'll watch Sheepish's episode <laughs> one edit. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, we'll um, we'll watch Ivan Ortega's cut of Last Jedi. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I less, from as as someone who like has seriously delayed some projects, like the first K Kenobi trailer said coming soon. And it was posted about 18 months before the release. Yeah, I can't really talk, can I, with my own fan edit that I've been on for like years. Now. Yeah. 
Wait, that would have been much easier to bring up. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so fair enough. You know what? Like, he'll get it done when he gets done. But like, yeah. But if, is there even any point in if literally the fight scene is the only thing he needs to do? <laughs> wow. Really? He's, he, that's what he's. I swear that's what he said before that he, that I mean, he just wants to get that fight scene done. But now I, you could see there were t so many sour grapes when he was watching the reimagined um, A New Hope scene during that lightsaber fight. I didn't. I didn't watch it. I. I. I, sh I should. Sh I should watch his reaction to that. Did you do a reaction to that? I didn't. Um, I watched it ahead of time, and then I kind of regretted it because my real time reaction was kind of amazing, and I really wish I'd have captured a video on it. But um, by the by the way, people from the future, F exit and post scene thirty eight reimagined just came out. Yeah, and uh, it, it's fucking awesome. Um, complexity then um, uh, um, gets a three. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give this one low as well. I mean, as you said, like he's not re he's not reworking very much the actual plot. Mm -hmm. The stuff that he's reworked mostly a certain character reactions. He's done a lot with Anakin and made him more confident and headstrong and with that hint of darkness there. But in terms of the overall plot, this is one of the few edits that actually retains the majority of the plot as it's presented by George Lucas in the original movie. Um, I mean, he's done a lot of great audio work. Like I will say that like from what I could hear, like his description on things and how he's gone about stuff. Um, I did notice some Jar Jar, um, especially in the Gungan fight, some Jar Jar voice carryover in some scenes that, like, Jar Jar's not on screen, but you can still hear his voice ca continuing mm. in some shots, which was weird. Um, but I'm, yeah, you might have been hearing his audio. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it was his audio, but it was just, it, it wasn't. Be, it was weird. Well, no, I mean, um, I mean, like, because remember, in, in the commentary, it sounds like the the commentary track is desynced with the video for That's even true, though yeah. there were like three instances really far apart where it seems very well synced, yeah. That, yeah. which doesn't really make sense um, at all. At maybe, all. maybe he, um, he flubbed the audio commentary in some points and he like cut bits out and had to like move it around. But then again, why wouldn't you sing? Maybe um, I I'm going to go low as well. I'm going to go 3.5 and I'm just going to give it the point five for the, um, the attention to the character. So he has changed stuff in that regard. But uh, it is still pretty much exactly the same movie. All right. On to you for necessity. Okay. So was this an edit that needed to be made? Was this something that people were clamoring for? Um, did this have effect on history? I mean, again, I've got to go <laughs> 10 out of 10, right? I mean, there probably isn't a, a better example of an edit that's had this kind of impact. Was there a necessity for it? Oh boy, was there. I mean, <laughs> Phantom Menace came out in 1999, and whilst I personally can't vouch for it, it was the first Star Wars movie I ever saw. I was six years old. I thought Jar Jar was the funniest thing ever. I connected with the character of Jake Lloyd. I was the intended audience for that film, pretty much. It was that new generation of Star Wars fan. Um, but even if they didn't want to admit it, there was like, you watch like The People versus George Lucas, that great documentary film that came out, um, a whole slew of other things that was, you know, the internet may have not been as big back then, but there must have been some outcry from people that were not pleased with this movie. So I think any attempt to kind of correct it or bring it to a stronger version than what it is was absolutely a necessity at that point. And the fact that it was the first released and well-received and, you know, acclaimed fan edit out there it definitely has its place in fan edit history um and just reconstructing media that's already been presented like not just fan edits but just like everything like some trans some form of transformative media mm -hmm. so it's it's gotta get a 10 from me and it sold a lot of apple computers it did <laughs> you know he never got that titanium laptop by the oh, way i was gonna ask did he get that like i was mm. Yeah, he he comments that he ne it never showed up in a. Uh, he, he assumes he got lost in the mail. Let's yeah, just yeah. leave it at that. Uh, yeah, no necessity gets a ten. It's 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 there's not really no way to put to give it less than that. It was, you know, critics and filmmakers have commented on the original Phantom edit in most kidding cases, providing approval and recognition recognition, which would later further the fan edit movement. You gotta you gotta wonder if. Uh, you know, if this didn't come out, would Topher Grace even have yeah. made the editor strikes back? Because he, 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 that's one we're never going to get through, uh, review, sadly. Well, I mean, I, I, I was hyped about that when I heard it, but then I also heard about his two hour cut of The Hobbit, which is just not physically. Two hours good. and 25 minutes. But the thing is, I, I, I need to know. I need to know what he did. 
I yeah, I I mean I want to watch it. Like hell yeah, I want to watch it. But um, nah. So I I don't know. I don't know how his cut would have gone down. I've seen a cut of the Hobbit that's oh, about two no two hours. It was a two hour cut. Literally the name, including credits. Mm -hmm. Maybe he took like the fucking Damn. rank ass cartoon audio and then just like. Put the <laughs> I am Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. It's still a great cartoon. I love that. It's thing. not bad. You it's it's, it's better than it's better than the trilogy. I'd much rather watch that. Um, arguably. Uh, so necessity, are you giving it a ten, right? Yeah, necessity is getting a ten. No movie, the best named category. Does the edit work? Be that in its franchise. On its own. Oh, and my, by the way, back to necessity. I just want to point out, um, necess necessity points out uh, whether or did the effect have a an effect in history? Mm -hmm. Did the edit have an effect in history? That was written into necessity specifically to oh, give yeah. this a ten. Yeah, because I knew it needed one mm -hmm. for that. Uh, but back to movie. Does the edit work? Be the franchise on its own as a series. Uh, during this category, I think we, we will be presenting a score out of 10 for the source material, too. Mm -hmm. We did that with Pulp Empire. Uh, we didn't do that with anything else. Hey, what, well, I kind of did with Man of Steel. Where's your Man of Steel score out of 10? You think of that while I read this. What, the film? Yeah. Didn't I give it like a split like 4 or 5 out of 10? You gave Remastered a 6. I don't know what you gave Man of Steel. Oh, Man of Steel, I give like a fucking 3. Like out of 10, <laughs> 3 or 4. Nice. Um, for my movie on this one, again, it's really difficult because it's still very much the original movie, just lessened somewhat, but it's still the same movie. Mm -hmm. So I'm still going to go relatively low with this one. It's weird because I have so many mixed emotions with this film, it being the first Star Wars film I ever watched. Like, I appreciate it what, for what it is, but it is a terribly put together movie. Like, I, I just fundamentally, like, flawed mm -hmm. from the writing and the acting and the pacing and everything yeah um but i'm also ranking this in terms of it you have to take that into consideration but also the new stuff that this edit's bringing and whilst the new stuff that this edit bringing is very minimal i do think you could absolutely substitute the original i'd substitute this for the original movie i think that you could if someone's never seen Phantom Menace before and you want to show them the Star Wars movies, you could absolutely show them this. It still retains all of the main things, gets rid of some of the comedy in there and some of the awkward lines and slapstick and just just completely redundant material in there. Mm -hmm. So um, is it better than the original Star Wars? Here's the thing with like, I've reached a level of acceptance with the prequels now. I don't think I they're good movies. I think they have some good moments in there. I think there are some great scenes. I do think there are moments of great performances in there sprinkled throughout. They mostly come into it with um, Hugh McGregor and some stuff in the um, the later two films. Um, but you kind of accept, with exception to the Disney films, because I, I don't like seven and eight. Like fundamentally, I don't. But with the prequels, there seven is was okay. There, there is charm in like the terribleness of the films like i i'd see it was fantastic. maybe i'm just like a blind fanboy and can just accept it but like the memes that have come out about it and everything <laughs> like that you kind of accept all of the bad so when you're stripping all of that away the stuff that with hindsight now you can laugh about you can joke about you can quote you are kind of just left with sort of like a hollow average product now is I guess where I'm coming at this. I'm not the person to review this movie. I'm not like it's it's just such a weird. I'm gonna give it. Oh, fuck it I'm, I'm gonna give it a five. I'm gonna give it split down the middle because I I'm feel so torn on this. I am I there is a conflict in me right now, and I've I've just got to go middle of the road. I don't like Phantom Menace as a movie, but um. How do you, what do you give Phantom Menace? <sighs> I'm going to say 5.5 and like really I'm going to say it's more because again like I've embraced this because is nostalgia. There, there is yeah there is way more thought processed into the characters and pacing with this edit so for that reason it's a much better thought process behind it than George Lucas ever had um this editor shows restraint and he knows what to keep and what to sacrifice but I've just come to accept 
everything that Phantom Menace encapsul encapsulates, even though I don't like the movie, I've still got to give the original just that little bit more. I don't know why, because it's not a better movie. But, Interesting. But my heart of hearts is telling me that the original is better, because that's how it was made. Just out of curiosity, where do you put Revenge of the Sith if Phantom Menace is a five-point fight, fight that, that fuck? I'd give um, see, Revenge of the Sith does have some boring as fuck moments in it too. I'd probably it's give so that as beautiful. At most, I'd probably give it a seven. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like that's, it's, kind of, it's that's where I put Solo. Like it's the most no Solo. I'd go like fucking. You know what? Like I'd rank Solo lower than Phantom Menace. I really would. Like really? For, for me, like bar Rogue One, perhaps because Rogue One, like I'd definitely rather watch more than Attack of the Clones or phantom menace but i'd still rank it i'd above rather my... see revenge of the sith than blood in my urine because <laughs> exactly there you go there you go um but um seven eight um solo i definitely rank below attack of the clones or phantom menace for me i would infinitely <laughs> i find phantom menace and attack of the clones infinitely more watchable than any of those disney films that's just me personally. I know that's yeah, yeah. Gonna off a lot of people. I mean, you that. you know, I like disagree disagree with you very heavily on what you said. You know, I I, mm -hmm. I honestly, if fan, if Force Awakens came out first, I would probably like it more than a te than a New Hope. Just mm -hmm. like the my main gripe is how similar it is. If you know what I mean? Yeah, it's very much a, se a sequel reboot mm -hmm. remake. Uh, Last Jedi gets uh, just like I, I have to give it a nine because it relies on the other movies to be mm -hmm. awesome. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but as far as this edit goes, which is like what's important and why you're here, um, you know, not why, not what we just said. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely an, I I consider it an improvement over the Phantom Menace, which isn't exactly saying much, but it's. I, I would hold this Phantom Menace at like a three out of ten, but and um, it, this would get a it would also get a five, which mm -hmm. brings the final rotten JX presented cinema savvy JX sa savvy uh, <laughs> score by seventy four percent, which is the highest score we have given for a fan edit on this so far for fan edit. Wow. Okay. Okay. We have not broken seventy. We, we've we've always been in the sixties. Well, can the next one do it? Um, probably well, not because we've already. I guess we. This is a good time as any to announce what we're doing next. Um, earlier in the schedule, usually we do these bi-weekly. Um, we're going to try and get this one out next weekend if we can. Um, on Sunday, we're doing the second part of the Game of Thrones with Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Uh, we're going volume two on it to coincide with the season finale of Game of Storm Thrones. Storm of Swords. Um, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, which really irks it's a third, me. Because... Name of the third book, even though it's the second season. Okay. Yeah, that kills me. That absolutely kills me. But um... well, you know, Clash of Kings had the video game thing. Oh, is that Clash of Clans? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, there's there's like a a game. I think it's called War of the Roses that uh, has like this big overhaul mod that makes it Westeros. Oh, okay. Which makes I, sense if it's War of the Roses. That's very fucking appropriate. Mm -hmm. But it's called uh, Clash of Clash of Kings, and it's very much the War of the Five Kings. Mm -hmm. It's like when you. T I think this is why a Clash of Kings. This is why when you initially told me what these Game of Thrones edits were, I thought it was to keep it as close to the book as possible. Because uh, if I was editing season two of Game of Thrones, I would. I would try and edit it in the structure that the book is like that opens with Stannis on the beach, getting light bringer um, at night Isn't time with Melisandre. First thing that happens. That's the, that's the first scene along with um, someone trying to put with, um, Oh God, what's his name from star Wars. The death toll is catastrophic. What oh, is well, I name? recognize that the, he was with, yeah, with CO Bibble trying to poison Melisandre. That's the opening scene of book two. And it's not the opening scene of season two, so I would Isn't do it? some. No, it's um, um, the tawny. Uh, it's, it's the fight at Joffrey's name day. Ah, uh, yes. With Sedontus, if I remember rightly. Have but, as um, much as you like. Speaking. I have a whole barrel. <laughs> speaking of more Game of Thrones things, you've agreed to join me on a review for tomorrow's episode. Yeah. I. Today, tonight's episode. Tomorrow's tonight's review. episode for in the UK. Um, it's early hours of Monday morning for us, but I'll be watching oh, it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that explains some shit. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, you're joining me on that. So um, look out for that on my channel, Cinema Savvy. Um, go subscribe, watch our videos, watch my, watch me blabber on about movie trailers and movies that come out. Um, and... oh, um, do you have any clothing, closing thoughts about the Phantom edit that you'd like to get off? Um, if you haven't checked it out and you're a Star Wars fan, definitely check it out. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, you're a Star Wars fan or fan editor. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's impact is undeniable. It's, and it's probably one of the best Star Wars ones out there, even if it doesn't change the movie all that much, which is probably why I ranked it a little bit low in terms of the movie itself. But, uh, yeah, go and check it out. It's decent. Yeah, I think it's something that every fan editor should watch at least once, especially with the commentary, but also without just for reasons. Would you uh, say this is the Citizen Kane of fan edits? No, because I think C Citizen Kane holds up. <laughs> and unfortunately, this one is really good for what it is. Mm -hmm. Whereas Citizen Kane just remains good. Okay. okay. Uh, but continue plugging your shit. Yes. Um, just search Cinema Savvy. You'll find us. I don't know if there's a link in the description down below. I don't know if that's what you do. Um, I do. Okay. Well, go go into the description. Click us. Give us a subscribe. Give us a watch. Even if you don't give us a subscribe, give us a watch at least. Uh, to we do appreciate it. And uh, there'll be much more content coming out. I just got done doing three trailer reactions as well. More to follow. So go check that out too. To be completely honest, um, your 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 channel comes first in the description because YouTube is more likely to like send your shit out there if the first link is another YouTube link. Oh, okay. Algorithms. Well, thank you. Like I know that I know you choose about those algorithms. That's like on a higher pay grade than I'll ever be. So I, I don't understand <laughs> all that stuff. But um I'm, yeah. I'm I'm just a guy that makes content and likes talking about movies. So that that's it. Then then I leave the numbers and the analytics to other more intellectual people than myself. Sounds yeah. 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 Well, I, unless you're doing this show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a little thing, little nod to the future. Um, I've been working off and on on replacing the video with the Blu-ray footage. Uh, there are some shots that didn't transfer over, and I need to be upscaled. There's some effects that I need to replicate. That, but the not terrible looking earlier version of it is actually the master that I used for uh, for. Tremor in the Force, Episode One. Mm -hmm. My my cut. Uh, if you, if anyone watching this wants to use that as a master, uh, you can you know go fuck your no. Uh, <laughs> to reach out. I I've got a version of it that's got some frames I don't want in there that I don't think you don't want in there because it's literally one frame. Because all I did was uh, for the for, for the earlier dress was just have the uh, Blu-ray over the the Phantom edit with mm -hmm. the opacity at like 50 and just cut when it, um, when it desynced. But that didn't always work for some reason because sometimes it lags and mm -hmm. you think the first frame is actually the last frame. Yeah. It happens. But yeah, yeah. The, watch it, use it as a master for your edits, learn from it, become better from it and stop watching this because it's over. Oh, also before you do it, don't oh, click oh, it. oh, there's one thing that needs to be said, though. Yes, word of the day. And we're going to do it Or whatever end. it's called. Um, by popular request each week, I'm asked to say a particular word in my British accent. Uh, one today's request, word is, uh, I mean, if you want to say it first for your US followers, and then I'll say it in my UK accent. No, no, no. I was given explicit instructions to not say it at least before you say it. Uh, you had to read it out because I could influence you in, in how you pronounce it. Right. Okay. The word is processing. Okay. Which I pronounce as processing. Yeah. Because so, um, we're from, I believe it or not, we're not actually like neighbors or anything. We're from very different parts of the world. I'm just like that not one... that different. The one weird British guy that lives next door to JX. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll I'll be taking requests for next week. Um, get your words in that you want to particularly hear in my lovely, luscious UK accent, and um, I'll see what I can do. And by the way, I hey, I could have a flat. Yeah, yeah, you could. Maybe that, possibly. That's a British term for apartment. It is. Okay, um, now it's actually you, over. You're catching on, but. <laughs>